friends and welcome to Koala Knits and Max. This is Shelly. I am happy to show you I have made my first piece of clothing in a flat panel and I'm in love. You're going to have so much fun making this. If I can do it, you can do it. So don't be scared. You got this. Okay, so I'm going to first say that um, I use Karen, Karen Cakes. This colorway is cinnamon sugar and for those of my friends who need to have the grams, it's 240 grams per ball. And I used two balls with um, a little bit left, maybe a quarter of a ball left. But what I do is I take the ball and I don't like it when colors change randomly in different parts of, of a piece. So I separated all the colors. And right after I um, finish the introduction here, I'll post a picture of my little basket full of all my colors. But I just take them all apart um, because I find um, when we do that, we have five colors that blend, that are meant to go together. And we don't have to sit in the store like, what does that go with that? Does that go with that? It's automatically done for you. All you have to do is take your balls apart and, uh, and uh, start working with them. So that's what I did here. We've got this beautiful um, looking vest. I, I love to wear tank tops, even in the winter time. I, I just, I, I'm a tank top girl. I will put a sweater over top of it and, uh, and go that way. But I, I hate long sleeves. I do wear them on odd times, but I don't, really don't like them. So um, this is just something that's perfectly for me. And uh, I will tell you that each front panel, what did each front panel measure? Eight inches, eight and a half inches long from seam to the edge of the ribbing here. Um, and it was 35 inches long from the top here to the bottom of the fringe. And each of the back panels is nine and a half inches long. So that's 19 inches, uh, or not, not long, wide. 19 inches wide across the back, okay? So that's, that'll give you a general idea as to um, the size of what this is. And if you want to, you know, add needles or to take away and make it smaller, whatever, whatever works for you, you just add, but follow the directions the same way that uh, I did it and you'll have success and it'll be so much fun. <laughs> okay. So, um, I also want to make mention that for after I finished each panel, I, I don't have the mats to stretch them out on into, and to, um, uh, block them. So what I do is, is I take pins and I pin them all, all on my bed. Like I have a quilt on the bed and everything and I just pin them all. I stretch them all and pin them and then I take a spray bottle and I spray them really good until they're um, till they're quite wet and then I flatten it out with my hands and then I let it dry overnight and take it off and and, um, and it works out pretty good. But then I show you what I do at the end of the video too to make it even more smooth and more flat and because once we're working with it when we're knitting and we're crocheting and we're holding it all the fibers get kind of stretched out. So um, I take a steam iron and I'll show you how to, don't just put an iron on top of this yet. There's a way to do it. So look for that at the end of the video. And what else do I need to tell you? Oh, 46 Addy, you need your stoppers and your yarn. Okay, so if you're, um, if you're ready to go, let's begin. <laughs> All right, so before we get started, I'm going to explain to you um, the count for the back panel um, because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you using the front panel, okay? So um, if, you, if you want to start with the back panel, then um, this is the count that you're going to use, but just skip ahead and see how I, um, how I cast on and how I complete the rows for the front panel because it's the same way. It's just that I'm doing the front panel on, on video because there's they're shorter sections, okay? So for the back panel, we're going to need 31 needles. Okay, so um, I'm going to rotate my barrel around. We're going to make sure that it's on circular motion. Um, so on the side of your machine, that little um, switch that you have, make sure it's down. Okay, you're going to bring your black needles in line with your, your yarn feeder here. And you're going to put your middle black needle up. Okay, that's going to be the middle of our rows. Um, just like I show you in the video that I, when I teach you how to do flat panels, um, that's how I, I'm going to work this. Okay, so I need 31 31 needles in this project. So I'm going to take 15 this way and 15 this way, and this will be 31. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And um, we know from the instructional video that I need to have three of these little spacers in between. So the dividers 1, 2, 3. I'm going to pop that on there. Okay, these are my turning two needles, and I'm going to start counting from here again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is the middle one. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And I know that I need to have five of these dividers in between because I need the extra space for this little jetted out part of the, of the feeder here. Okay, so I'm going to count 
one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to take my other stopper and I'm going to put it on there. Okay. So then you're going to go back to your first needle and your stopper is going to stop you. You're going to make sure that you do not knit these first two because those are your turning pegs and you're going to start by going behind and in front, behind and in front, all the way around. And when you get around, you should be behind, oops. So we know that there's four needles here that um, aren't worked. So this will be our 30th one. It's going to go behind there and then you're going to go underneath that little um, divider and into your feeder, okay? So if um, you need more explanation than that, then again, go look at my instructional video or um, go ahead um, on this video till you get to um, where I start the panels. It's right after this section, actually. Um, just uh, keep keep watching and I'll show you how I um, how I cast on and how I work it out to start with my 20 um, needle panel, okay? So I'm also gonna say that um, that you can you can do either panels first doesn't matter as long as you have your as long as you have your your stoppers in place you're going to make two panels of each size okay so go ahead and um, get your yarn ready and uh, and your machine ready and have fun all right so I have explained to you how we place our little stoppers um, for our back panels and for our front panels and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place them for our front panels okay so we know that we want 20 stitches um, worked stitches okay so i'm going to start counting from the middle here and i'm going to go um because i i always want my three black needles in the middle of my panel and so i'm going to go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay and then from there if this is going to be my first needle worked then i'm going to count the red dividers one two three i'm going to put my my little stopper there because I need these two white needles for turning needles okay so now once I've placed one stopper I can and the only reason why I started from the black is because I want those in the middle of my row but now that I've I've established where my halfway point is this direction from my black needles now I can start counting from this one okay so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty this is my last needle that I'm going to work um, and so I'm going to look at this red divider that's to the uh, left of it, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. Now, the reason why you have to count um, further, go farther on this side than the other side, is because um, of this little piece that's on the yarn feeder. By the time this comes across here, this, this little thing here is two needles in width. So that's why we need four needles um, on this end. Two of the, these first two are our turning needles, but we can't get to them um, until... You know, it it takes two more needles to 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 make it work because of this little thing. <laughs> Sorry, I can't explain it better than that, but trust me. Okay, so we've got four needles that aren't going, going to be worked here, and two on the other side, and that's for turning. The rest in between are twenty. Um, now again, please go and watch that video if you have not watched it. It's not that it's not that long, but it will totally be worth your while. Okay, so now we're gonna take it back to our till, till it can't go any further and that's that's the stopper and then we're going to miss this first one we're going to miss the second one and we're going to start our waist yarn on that third one which will be our first worked needle okay so one and then in front of that one behind in front behind in front until you have worked 20 needles okay and so i see that uh yarn uh, or this um, stopper coming back. And so I know that there's one, two, three, four unworked needles. So this is my 20th one, okay? So now I'm going to go behind that 20th one because that's how it lines up. If I was to do an, an odd number of stitches, then it would go, it would be in front of that last one, but we're doing an even number. So then I'm going to open my latch and put it in there. So it's very important that even though it's behind this needle, it has to go under that red divider that's to the left of it. After um, on every every row count that you a stitch count that you do okay so now it's going to look a little funny because it was in front instead of behind but that's okay trust me it will totally work it catches up to itself in, in the next row so you're going to go all the way until you can't go anymore then you're going to to bring it back and you're going to pull the back yarn working yarn a little bit tight as it goes pa past that little divider see how it went under that divider then you can um, keep going down the row okay 
And you see how there was a loop there, so it worked itself out at the, at the next row, okay? Now we're going to go back. We're gonna have it go over that little divider. Make sure that this first, the, the stitch from the previous row is over those red teeth and that this needle catches the yarn. And then once it gets over this red little divider, you can give it a little tug to tighten up the end um, row. And that's, the, for your waist yarn, it's really not um, that important, but it's always good to, to um, keep yourself consistent and have, and make sure that, uh, you know, if you do it on your waist yarn, you're gonna remember to do it on your working yarn. So um, it makes for a good habit. Now, another thing that I want to remind you that I remind you in the instructional video for panels always watch this first and this last needle in particular because um, sometimes these little loops don't want to go down over the red teeth okay and you want to make sure that they do okay so I'm going to pop that one down go as far as I can then I'm going to pull on my yarn at, tail at the end until it gets over top of it down under there then I give it a little pull these ones don't look like they're going to go down so I'm going to help these little little gaffers do their job the waist yarn that I chose for this is a little bit coarse, and so um, that's why it's sticking a little bit. Okay, push that one down. Yeah, see, they're not. That's okay. I can handle it for the for the um, waist yarn rows. Okay, put that one down over the. I'm glad this isn't the yarn I'm using for my project. The yarn that we're using, if you're using the same yarn that I'm using, is wonderful in the machine, okay? This is a Craft Smart yarn, and it's uh, it's what I'm using for my waist yarn, but I tell you, it's a beast because it's coarse. When you're buying yarns, give it a, like, take the ball and actually take your hand and rub it across the yarn. And if it feels coarse at all, just pay the extra money and get the color in a different brand that's smoother because because it really um, does make a difference in how it works in your machine. However, some ladies in my group, if you're not in my Facebook group, please go join it because there's some really smart and fun ladies on that group. Um, and uh, one lady said, showed us that she, she puts her yarn in nylon, like if she buys a yarn that's coarse like this, in nylon socks, ties up the end of the nylon and throws it in the washing machine and in the dryer and it comes out like a dream. So I actually have so many balls of yarn, I'm going to do that too. Okay, but anyways, back on to the project. <laughs> we're going to now take our, our counter and we're going to turn it to two zeros. And then we're going to add our first color, okay? So to do that, we're going to head on over to this first needle. It's just like when you're knitting um, in the round, um, you always want to start your yarn before the first needle, okay? So we're going to stick that in there. I'm going to grab both ends, just like that. And I'm going to knit three or four needles and then I'm going to take the working end and the um, both ends of my working yarn and I'm going to tug it and you if, if you didn't see back this up about a couple seconds and you'll see I tug it just so that the loop goes down over this divider and that way my stitches will will uh, not be loose at the beginning of my row okay so now I'm going to just give that one little tie so it, it stays in place and I'm going to make it a reasonable length they're too they're too long okay and then we're going to knit 10 rows if you're, if you're not changing colors, then you're going to knit until you get to row 130, okay? So I'm going, I went all the way to that stopper. I'm coming back. I'm going to take the end of my yarn that's behind the yarn feeder. I'm going to pull it pretty tight until that drops down over that, that uh, divider. Then I'm going to pull it a little bit just so that I don't have big loops down the side of my work. And then I'm going to go back. And I'm going to just make sure that that uh, my first couple of rows don't stick, okay? So my counter counted two rows and that's what I've done. And then I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna pull it in the back here just so it's a little bit tighter. Make sure my first uh, stitch that the loops are down over those red teeth and that my, my needle catches the yarn. Watching for it to go down over that and then I give it just a little snug, just a little tight, tightness there. And then I keep going, okay? Now again, if you are uh, um, wanting to do a different color number of color rows for color changes, that's fine. You do the pattern that you like. I'm doing five different colors. 
um, because like I told you, I took my ball apart and there's five colors in there. So I organized them the way I liked them and, uh, and I'm doing 10 rows of each color and I'm going to keep alternating until I get to row 130. This will get easier as I get a little bit of weight onto it. Okay. And there we go. All right. So if you're changing colors with me, you're doing the same thing, then keep going till you get to row 10. And when you get to row 10, this is six. And I'm working on seven now. And when you get to row 10 and you're finished row 10, come back and see me. All right, so once you uh, get finished row 10, you're going to take your, cut your yarn, you're gonna take it out of your feeder, you're going to, or, or whatever row it is that you're doing to have a color change, you're gonna back this up so that it comes out of those two turning needles and put it back down to the center of your machine just um, underneath your, your first stitch there, okay? Then you're gonna grab your color change, your yarn. Now, one thing that I would tell you is to make sure that you're sure of to what, what color you're using next because um, when I did my big panels, I got down about, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just counting as I'm looking at it. I think, it, yeah, it was a seventh row and I added the darker um, tan instead of this one. Um, and then I did three different colors after that. So I had to um, reattach, take it off my machine, reattach it to my machine. And if that ever happens to you, look up my video on that too. You can take your work off and then reattach it where you need it to change. Um, where you need to correct the mistake and that's what I did and then I just um, then finished it that way okay so anyways we're going to pop that down over the red teeth we're going to open the latch we're going to put in our color change shut the latch grab those two two ends we're going to do three needles and then we're going to take the working yarn both ends and we're going to pull it so that goes down under okay then we're going to give this a little tie and because this is not waist yarn to working yarn it's working yarn to working yarn we're going to tie a tight knot then cut that off don't cut them too short though because you have to work them in later um, and you need to have room to, uh, on your needle so it's not like doing a uh, a circular pattern where you where you can cut them really short because they're hidden inside okay so then we're going to do this until we get 10 rows so until my counter says I've done it'll say 20 okay and when I get to when it clicks on 20 then I finish row 20 which will bring me back to the start here and then I'm going to change my colors again okay always making sure that you pop down that first and the last because without fail they don't like to go down okay and I have a harder time going this direction um, I always feel like I gotta, I've got to guide it going this direction, but um, it's okay. It's, it doesn't take long. Oops, see, I missed that one, but I didn't get too far, so I can fix that. Um, but it doesn't take long, and it's, it's quite fun to do, so I'm really quite enjoying this. Okay. Pop that back over, and there we go. Okay, so you keep going. If you want to see me back after after I'm finished 10 rows of this one and I get to row 20 on my counter um, and finish it, I'll come back and do one more color change with you and explain what to do next and then um, leave you on your own. All right. Okay, so I just finished row 20, so I'm going to cut my working yarn. I'm going to open my yarn guide. I'm going to take that yarn out and I'm going to back it up until it loosens from those two white turning pegs. Okay, and then I'm going to just let it drop down into the machine. And I'm going to take my next color. I'm going to put it into the yarn feeder in, in between that last uh, needle and the and the working needle. So right down into that. Just same, same as what you would do with, a, with um, a circular pattern. You want it between your first and your last needle. Okay. And I'm going to grab both ends. I'm going to make sure that that... That stitch in the previous row is down over those two red teeth. I'm going to make sure that um, my needle is going to catch that yarn. And I'm going to do three needles. Then I'm going to take my both ends of my working yarn. And I'm going to, you watch this one here. I'm going to just pull it 
and help that down until it goes underneath and snug it up just again um, so that my my rows are even tension the beginning of the row is even tension like the rest of the row okay so now I'm going to tie this off this is um, going to go into a nice tight knot and I'm going to tie a longer tail because I have to sew that in later so I need to have uh, room for that tail to be sewn in on a, with the needle okay and now I'm going to continue knitting just in the same fashion that we've been doing okay until I get to row 30 and when I get to row 30 I know it's time to change my color again oops do you know why that happened you heard that that was because um, my yarn down on the, that's trailing to the floor got caught around the leg there and then it was tight and so my um I grinded I had to grind my gears because uh then I realized that it was tight there so um it was working too hard to get the yarn up so my mistake but I'm sure that this little baby is totally fine okay so anyways that's why that happened but I'm going to finish 10 rows so when my counter says 30 I'm going to change my yarn color again and I'm going to do that after every 10 rows just what we just did until I get to row 130 and then I'm going to finish row 130 and then um I will cast off and uh that I'll show you um when we get there how I go about doing that um, but when I get this a little bit longer where it's starting to to bunch up on the table I'm going to come back and show you what I do with that so um, keep going and then uh, once it starts to hit the table come back and I'll and uh, I'll, sh I'll show you what I do to um, add tension to the to the to the inside of the barrel here and to keep this from bunching up okay so go ahead uh, have fun finish your panel and uh, we'll see you when you're done Okay, so I am on row, I just finished row 70 actually, and I thought I would pause just to show you how I roll it up. I have this big hair clip, and so I bunch it up into a, into um, just a little, I just roll it up like that, and then I put my hand underneath so that I can grab the edge there, and I clip it like that. And that's how I get some some tension <laughs> along the barrel here. So um, anyways, uh, yeah, it's working out really well. I'm on row 70. It didn't take very long to get there. And I'm just loving this project. Uh, um, I hope that you're loving it too and that you're um, uh, able to get through your rows without many tucked stitches <laughs> or drop stitches. Um, I think in this whole project, actually, I've only had one. So that is um, actually very, very good. So this yarn works like a dream. And, um, and I find that it's less you have less drop stitches or tuck stitches on a flat panel than on a, on a circular for whatever reason maybe because we're going a little bit slower but anyways i thought i would show you what i do when i when it starts to get long i just tuck it up like that and and let that be my tension okay all right so keep going and i'll see you when you're done row 130. okay friends how's it going you got that all done you got to your 130 rows didn't take that long did it i hope it went successful for you and that you didn't get too many drop stitches i didn't get any actually so i'm <laughs> really happy about that you can see that um i'm sporting these navy and white checkered kind of <laughs> pants well it's because it's nighttime already i'm in my jammies and i thought well hey we're friends so i'm not gonna change you can see my legs in my pajamas okay so i got my 130 rows done and now i'm going to add my waist yarn Okay, we'll do that together. Okay, so I'm going to take that back to that first needle and I'm going to add my waist yarn. Make sure you add it in a contrasting color so you can find your stitches easily um, later when we're uh, fixing our ends. Okay, and we're just going to do as many rows as you're comfortable with. Okay, I'm going to do seven or eight because that's normally what I'm comfortable with. Ah! I skipped a stitch there. Good thing it was on my waist yarn and not uh, not on my um, regular knitting. Oh, and another one. Doesn't like this purple yarn. Okay, guys, this is purple Craft Smart yarn. Don't buy it. <laughs> oh, anyways, no, I'm not concerned about it. I'm going to just do um, a few more rows, more than what I would, would normally do. And I'll just uh, sew up this end first. And so then I'm not going to, you know worry about it sitting around and then moving from location to location or whatever if I grab a pile and then it comes and unravels so that's what I'll do as soon as I take it off the machine I'm going to um close this one up but I'm going to give it a, one more row after this on my way back okay no actually I think this is um 
I don't think this is actually Craft Smart yarn. I just am using a very end part, but I think it's actually Bernat, and it's usually very good. So it was the operator, not the yarn this time. <laughs> Although I did try to pass it off on the yarn. It really isn't. So anyways, we're going to take that out. And we're going to rotate our barrel back this way. And then back, and it will come off. Generally not letting go of that first one, but that's okay. I'll go back and get it. And there we go. We've got our one panel done, our one front panel done, and we're going to stretch it out widthwise and lengthwise, get all those stitches in line and softened up and beautiful. Okay. And when we're done that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our second one exactly the same way. Okay. So you go ahead and do that. And then when you come back, I'll show you how I close the ends with a crochet hook. All right. All right, so we are going to fix this end before it unravels. However, I did catch it with um, with my favorite stitch markers, <laughs> a bobby pin, and I caught that, that one stitch so it didn't unravel my row. Okay, and so we're going to take our crochet hook. I've grabbed a four millimeter hook. We're going to make a slip knot on our hook. Then we're going to find that stitch on the end here. And we're going to, I'm going to take that little loop that's on the end there. Even though that's just around, that's just the edge, edging, so it's not going to unravel anything. I still want to, I still want to work it. So I'm going to insert my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull that through that little loop and then through the yarn on the loop on my hook. And then I'm going to chain one. That's how I'm going to start this row, okay? Now we're going to look for our stitches in our waist yarn. So we can see all these little um, gray bumps there are our stitches. So I'm going to insert my hook yarn over bring it through that loop that's on my hook I mean that's bring it through that loop that's there and then through the loop that's on my hook as well that's a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain one okay I'm going to do that all the way down so I'm going to go into that next loop from underneath going up yarn over grab that yarn bring it through that loop then bring it through the loop on my hook that's another slip stitch and chain one okay and I'm going to do that all the way across under the loop and through that loop and chain one. Pick up the stitch, yarn over, go through the loop, go through the loop on my hook, chain one. Slip stitch, chain one, all the way down. Okay, that's the slip stitch, that's the chain one. That's the slip stitch and chain one. Slip stitch, chain one. And I'm not gonna leave my edges like this, I. Um, I'm going to do a crocheted edge edging around them, but now I've got these uh, chains that I can I can you know attach my yarn to 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 finish it off. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Actually, this is a work in progress. As I um, I had the uh, the vest all planned out and drawn out, but I'm teetering whether I'm going to do fringes or whether I'm going to do a crocheted border, not border, but um, edge. Um, because I I love fringes, but the last the last um, jacket that I made, a cardigan thing that I made on my channel has fringes. So I'm thinking maybe this one I won't do fringes, but I do love them. I think they just look so cool on, on sweaters and clothing and stuff. Okay, so here we go. We're almost at the end. And if you don't crochet, this is such an easy stitch for you to learn. So um, go buy yourself a crochet hook and... and uh, Follow along and do it this way as well because you'll be able to catch it. No problem. You'll get it. Okay, so I'm going to pick up this stitch. Chain one. Now I've got to find that sneaky little guy that was going to fall off my hook. There he is. I'm going to slip stitch that. Chain one. Now I can remove that stitch marker. Get all these ends out of my way. Let's see, then I'm going to go into this very last one here. Okay. Slip stitch, chain one, and actually I'm going to just pull that through. Cut it off and pull it tight. Now we can go ahead and remove that waist yarn. Okay, just by pulling it like this. This is the easy end. 
Now they're both easy. One just takes an extra step, but they're both easy. Okay, and now we've got that one removed. There we go. And we've got our edging done, okay? So you see how it made just with the, with that chain one, it made a little a little loop there, and I did that purposefully. You can just do a slip stitch, and then you're not going to get this little square in there kind of thing. But um, that's because I want to I want to do a, a stitch in there. Um, I'm gonna, I'm well. You'll see. We'll wait till we get to the end, and then I'll have decided what I'm gonna do actually. But if if I, if you do a fringe, that's a great place to hang your fringes from. That will be just beautiful. Um, okay, so that's how we're gonna um, close off both ends. So you go ahead. And you uh, do that with both of your ends and uh, and get that completed. So you've got two, two panels that are um, 20 rows, just like that. You've got, um, and that's your front rows. And now you've got two panels that are your back rows. Now I started with the front panels just because they were, they were less stitches for me to show you and it would, you know, it wouldn't take quite as long, but you're going to make your second panel, the, your back panels exactly the same. All right, so now that you've got all your panels done, it's time to uh, join. And we're going to use the mattress stitch or the invisible join. Um, and this is what it's going to look like. I already started, okay? So this is my, my two back panels, and this is my join from the right side. From the wrong side, that's what it looks like. Um, now I went in a little too far on this one, I'll be honest. Um, I picked up, because I the, the very edge was curling a little bit, I was having a hard time getting the stitch, so I went into the next row, which made my um, panels a little bit um, narrower, but it still it still works out great, and I don't mind this little ridge here, but then for the for the side, I went ahead and did that, and then I just um, I just picked up where I needed to pick up, and that's that's how it, it looks, okay? So um, you're going to, to do the invisible join, up the side here and then when you're done you're going to hide your ends and because then you've got a little ridge that you can hide your ends in i'm going to cut that off there so all the little ends that come from your color changes you're going to hide into here okay and then when you get to the top of your work so you're going to start from the bottom and when you get to the top of your work um this is uh this is the armhole because i want this to be a tank top with no sleeve um i'm going to leave it open from the top of the shoulder there, um, I've counted 10, 20, 30, 40 rows down. And um, and then at the bottom of the row there, that's where I'm going to end my invisible join. Okay. And then I'm going to just go and um, I'm going to um, to stitch this up. Just, well, actually, I'm not going to stitch it up. I'm going to do um, half double crochets along the border here, which I'll show you once we're finished joining. But you're going to, I'm going to go to the other end here, to the other side. I'm going to lay the right sides together, starting at the bottom. Now, um, try not to get frustrated with all these loose ends. Uh, you'll eventually get your, your swing of things, but I'm gonna just show you that, and I'm gonna start up a little bit further and then I'm gonna sew these this end together um, with, with the tails that are there. Um, I always do that on my blankets too. I start up about three stitches higher, but um, two or three stitches, but I always, for my blankets or anything that I join together, I always make sure that the wide part of the stitch is at the top on both sides. You, you find your first row and then it's easy to get under there and get the, um, get the two bars that you need uh, to do your mattress stitch and come back and forth. Now, the reason why, um, why the middle section that I showed you was wider is because I had to fold it over a little bit to get to that, to that, um, Normally, this is the is the row that would be good to pick up because then it leaves less of a edging, but that's hard to get into. So I um, moved it over to this next row, but uh, on the middle panel, it was like I had to move it over an extra half a row. And so that was why it was wider. So then up on the side, on that first side that I did, I actually, rather than grab this, have it wide at the top, it worked out best if I had it with a narrow part, okay? And then I had a narrower, seam so I grab I actually went against my rules <laughs> and I I put the the narrow I took the first row that I could find there and I took the narrow bar at the top the the, the narrow part of this stitch is at the top and then I went in and I grabbed two bars and then to the other side and grabbed two bars and finished it but I'm telling you when I say that it's easier to do it with the with the wide end up it's absolutely easier to do it. You can get your needle in there and get your stitches better. Um, I, I fought with it and I didn't like it at all. So this is this is my first dress like this. So this is really a trial and error thing that you're working along with me. But <laughs> but um, I am going to just not worry about a little bit wider of an edge and I'm going to go in 
to the wide part. I'm going to do it like I normally do it with the wide part of the V at the top on both sides, okay? This looks like a little bit, it was a little bit loose at the stitch um, when I started it and I didn't catch it. So I'm going to, I'm going to sew this part closed with one of these tails, okay? So I'm going to make sure that that's lined up. And the easiest way if you have wonky stitches at the front is to line it up where your, where your color changes. And then you know that that's, um, you know that that's, uh, and you trail it down and you know that, that you've got it right, okay? So, there we go. I'm gonna find this row that's got the wider stitches. It's very, it's a little bit finicky to start out with, but once you get going, um, trust me, it, you'll, you'll go fast, okay? So I'm going to, not that we need to go fast in all our projects, but it won't take you forever is what I'm trying to say. So this is like a um, a stitch that that um, I I missed. And, and it's it's like not a nice stitch. So something happened there, but I'm going to fix that again at the end. But I'm going to, so I'm going to go down into that one. Pick up two bars. Get your working yarn. Doesn't matter what color because you don't see it, but I'm staying consistent with this color all the way, all the way through my project um, for picking up. Then I'm going to go across and I'm going to pick up those two bars. And pull it through. And once you get um, 20 or 30 rows up, then, then, uh, you'll really get into the groove of it, okay? And then I'm going to pick up those two on that side. I'm gonna go into the stitch that I came out of on the other side, pick up two bars. This is the invisible stitch or the mattress stitch. And I have a um, tutorial on that as well. And then I'm gonna go into this stitch that I came out of, pick up two bars. Into the stitch I came out of, pick up two bars. I'm going to do this all the way up until where I want to um, stop for the bottom of my um, the bottom of my my armhole okay and for me that's 40 rows down okay for you it might be different you got to measure it out okay so now I've picked up those two bars and I see that there are three there are three on this side if I want to line up my my um, stitches the right way so I'm going to pick up all three okay and then I'm going to go to this side and just pick up one just so it evens out and then I'm going to pinch. Well, actually, at the end here, all you've got to do is grab both ends and pull, okay? And then you've got your, your seam started here. And you keep going all the way up until you get to where you um, want to stop the bottom of your armhole. And then when you get there, um, you tie it off. And, and uh, all I do at the top there is I just go through here and I just tie it off and, and secure it, okay? Um, and, then, and then we'll move on to the, to the edging. All right, so go ahead and finish that with all... Um, your side so you're going to put your two sides on you're going to you're going to connect your middle panel and you're going to connect the other side so you've got three three rows of invisible join that you need to do so go ahead and do that and then uh, when you're done come back and see me all right so if you have finished that let me just adjust this a little bit if you have the camera if you have finished uh, going up it should look something like that now I just I hid in all my um my ends except for one I thought I would just do that online for anyone who's new and needs to let me just turn this and needs to see what I do okay so I'm just going to thread my needle and I'm going to just weave it in and out of that ridge that I created while I was while I was sewing my sides closed okay so just go down a little ways pull that through and then go up okay so you just weaved it back and forth I'm doing this left-handed now so <laughs> I'm not left-handed all right so then I'm going to but rather than turn it in the camera, pull that up just like that. Okay, and then cut that off. So that's what I did with all my ends. And they're all hidden nicely inside of the seam there. Okay, and you're going to do the same thing. And then when you get to the your armhole section, okay, you're going to, um, from from where you decided you wanted the, the base of your armhole to be, you're going to trail it all the way up to the top. Um, and because I'm making this a tank top style or, or a sleeveless style, I guess is a, is a way to say it too. I'm going to um, close it at the top corner here. All of this is going to be my armhole. I like a wide armhole on, on a sweater vest, okay? So I'm going to um, thread my needle. If you don't have a long enough end, then um, you'll have to attach one and then proceed as you normally would, okay? So I'm going to turn that just like that with my right sides together, okay? And I'm going to attach my needle and I'm going to pick up the corner here. Just like that, just to attach the corner. And then 
you can use some stitch markers if you like to to hold these this in place um, where you need it but I'm just going to trail it down just uh I'm going to move my camera down one second. As I was saying, I'm just going to trail it down, um, smoothing it out, not tugging on it in any way. Um, just letting it fall where it falls. And then I'm going to just pick up, I'm going to pick up um, the one stitch that's on the side here. I'm going to actually go a little closer to the corner here. Pick one, up, one um, stitch up or one uh, layer or one. My small needle broke, like the little end off the thing. So this one's a little bit wider. So I'm going to be a little finicky with it. But then I'm going to go underneath that stitch again, the next one, the next loop, and then over. Pick up just one because I don't want a wide, um, a wide seam at the top here. And I'm going to just go across like that. Then I'm going to go over, always picking up on the far side and then coming over um, to the to the one that's closest to you. Okay. Then I'm going to go over to the next one. Just come across just like that. And it makes a beautiful seam um, that's uh, not bulky in any way, okay? And pick just one up and one up. And I'm going to continue that all the way down. Then I'm going to tie it off, and I'll show you from the other, other side what it looks like, okay? So then on this side, this is what it looks like at the front. So it's beautiful, actually. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Just a simple... Um, stitch that that works up just beautifully okay so you're going to go do that and you're going to tie it off and then you're going to have your space um, where your neck is here um, and we're going to we're going to do um, a crochet border all around and we'll do that next so once you get that done um and and uh you know tie off your your ends on the corner here i still have to tie the end off on here and hide it um then we'll put again the next process but again you're looking at this and you're probably saying oh that's so wide and you're right it is and i explained that earlier on in the video um and you can avoid that if if you like but actually it's it's not going to bother me it's it's a beautiful seam on the other side so so it'll be fine okay um so there you go. That's how we attach our, our panels together. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and finish off this top of the arm and uh, like the shoulder. And then um, when I'm finished that, I'll come back and I'm going to show you how I, the, what I've decided to do for the border. Okay. And in, in uh, the process of sewing all this together, I decided I am going to do a fringe at the bottom um, because I just love fringes on longer, on longer sweater vests or sweaters or cardigans or whatever. And so I'm going to do that again on the bottom here, but I'm going to do a crocheted border around the the um going up the top and and around the neck so um finish finish that part off and when you're done that come back and see me and we'll continue on to the next step okay all right so how did you do <laughs> all done okay so i've got mine both done um and that's what the what this the top is looking like okay um that's the outside and that's the inside and of course because we started our panels with the same color then then my shoulder panels are the same color on both sides and that's what i wanted um okay so the top is is um is a dominant color there we go and that's the other side now i'm going to now go down to the edge the bottom okay um and we're going to crochet a border on there and, and i love half double half double crochet is one of my favorite crochet stitches and it's actually so easy to do um and we're going to start with that now i've determined that i'm going to do two rows of half double crochet if you do one row you're going to start let me just grab the color that i want to use and i'm going to show you we're going to put our loop on the hook if you want to start or if you're just going to do one row or an odd number of rows, you're going to start on this side of the material, okay? So you're going to start, that was my wonky stitch, you're going to start um, with the right side facing you because then um, your first row of stitches is going to be facing the right direction and your second row when you turn is going to be the wrong direction showing, and which looks beautiful, by the way. And, and then your third row will be the right you're going to turn again so then it'll be the right side up so if you do even numbers odd numbers of rows you're going to start with the right side facing you okay if you do even number of rows which is what i'm going to do because i'm only going to do two i'm going to start on the other side and i'm going to start on the inside okay because my first row is going to be um the right side facing this way and then when I turn and I do my second row my last row is going to be the right side okay and that's what I want for this project so that's um uh, what I'm going to do okay so these I'm going to tie off and hide into my half double crochets at another time but I'm going to go ahead 
put my loop into that bottom stitch there. Let me get this all out of the way. Okay, let me just uh, play with this just for one second, get these strings out of the way here, these yarn ends. Okay, and we're going to, um, with the loop on our hook, we're going to insert it into that bottom stitch. We're going to yarn over and pull it up and pull it through both, okay? That's a slip stitch. And then we're going to chain one and we're going to yarn over, go into that same space, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now you've got three loops on your hook and we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's a half double crochet, all right? So then I'm going to go up, then I'm going to yarn over, then I'm going to go up to that next space, that next stitch. I'm going to yarn over, bring it through. I got three loops on my hook, yarn over, go through all three stitches or all three loops. I do have um, instructional videos on how to do the half double crochet um, on my channel. So you can go ahead and look at that um, and, uh, you know, learn that way if you need to. And if you haven't, if you haven't crocheted at all, start with the basics. Do um, just go and look at those videos of mine and follow them up and you will get to um, this, this stage in no time. Okay. So you can see those little holes that are there between the rows. Okay. That's what I'm going to go into all the way up. Okay. And I'm going to do a half double crochet into each one of those all the way up and I'm not putting tight tension on this I'm just uh, letting it slip through my fingers as it wishes okay and there we go I mean there's a little bit of tension on it um, but it's it's not a really loose tension now because we're doing single panels here if you don't do something like this if you don't put a border on your um, on your work then this is going to constantly curl like this okay um, even though I did block this, uh, it was curling completely, but I, I did block it by pinning it down and and, um, and spraying it and letting it dry. Uh, and uh, and that did help me. So it helps it helps with working it. but but um, if you don't do a border of some sort on your on your live edge like this, then um, it will curl, okay? So now I'm coming up to the color exchange where my um, yarn ends are, and I'm gonna go into there. And then I'm going to just hold those down, yarn over, go into that next stitch, yarn over, and those are in the middle there, yarn over and finish my stitch. And I'm going to do that all along the edge there until I feel like I've got enough um, of the of the yarn ends hidden, okay? All right, so there's there's a pretty big loop there and I don't know why, so I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, maybe it was a looser stitch, do another one, okay? So then I'm going to keep going up like this doing half double crochets in every row I think that's enough for that one so I'm going to now go to the other side and I'm going to cut that off okay and I'm going to continue that all the way let me take that out all the way up the one side we're going to go all the way up and over the shoulder there and through around the back and then over this other edge that's going down the other side until we get to the other end okay and when we get to the other end we are going to turn our work and we're going to do another row so when I get to that end I will come back on and I will show you what I do and uh yeah it's and then we're gonna these little where we um had these little um edging here where I've got the little squares because we did the chain one we're going to add some fringes so hopefully I have enough uh, yarn <laughs> left to do enough fringes but we're gonna give it a go so all right grab yourself a coffee um, hunker down and and get her done it's not gonna take long at all to be honest with you um, so go for it and I'll see you back when you're done all right so I got to the end of my row and I'm going to yarn over and I'm gonna just pick up a little loop that's um, on the bottom uh, on just on the edge there okay and I'm going to do my my double crochet as normal except for I've decided something a little different before you take it through those three loops you're going to change colors so take, grab your next color that you want if you decide to change colors if you don't then you just continue going and I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to finish off that stitch with my new color then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work okay and then I'm going to now generally, or one way to do half double crochet rows is, is now you would um, go into the, this is most how it's typically done. You'd go into the top of the stitch and you would do your double crochets there, but I'm going to go into the spaces between the stitches, okay? So yarn over, go into that space, yarn over and complete your double crochet. 
or pardon me, your half double crochet, okay? Yarn over, go into that space, complete your half double crochet. Now, the reason why I decided to change colors here is because, <laughs> drum roll please, I've changed my mind. I'm going to do four rows of half double crochet. You can stop at two if you like, um, or one or three or however many you like. But as I was doing it, I thought, actually, to be honest with you, I, I went up and I started doing the second row in the same color here. And then I um, it dawned on me, you know, why don't you do more rows and change colors? So I thought, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So this is what it's gonna look like. That's the second row in between those stitches there. And I'm gonna go all the way around. And because I want this, this edging to be facing the right way, I have to do four rows now, okay? Um, because I started on the inside. And that's what I mean by it. When your last row, your your main, your stitches that are um, the front of your work is, is showing up. So I, I just thought, man, you know, this is a striped cardigan. Having a striped edging might be beautiful. So <laughs> that's why I changed my mind um, as I was doing it. So um, you have the prerogative to change your mind whenever you want when you're doing a project. <laughs> These creative minds of ours can uh, can work in funny ways and at funny times. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue this all the way around. Then I'm going to join the same way I did with this one. Um, finishing off my last crochet from this row. Um, my last uh, half double crochet with with uh, the yarn change color going through those three loops and then i'm going to do it again and again so i'm going to have four rows okay and so um and that will make my front panel a little bit wider too which uh, i'm not sad about so uh it works so keep going get your your um border done and when you're uh, when you're finished that come back and see me and we will do our armholes all right, so I made it around and I'm going to finish this row. Um, going into the, doing a half double crochet into the top of that chain one that I that I had there. And then we're going to bring up till we have three loops on our hook. Then we're gonna take our new color, which I'm choosing the, the lightest tan. It looks gray, but it's actually light tan because that's the last row that I have on my, on my cardigan. So um, I want my, I'm gonna do these last two rows in this color and I'm gonna then bring that, that new color through those three loops and chain one. And now I'm ready to start my my new row. Now the reason why you, you have to bring it through those three loops is because then your color starts at the beginning of your row. Otherwise, otherwise I would have um, a different color at the beginning of every row, okay? So that's how you do it. So I've done my chain one. I'm gonna yarn over. I'm going to go into that next stitch, pull up a loop and go through all three and just continue on as I was doing. Um, when I get to the end, I'm going to join into that last chain, the chain one at the end of the row. I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to do another row in this same color. And then I will be finished my edging along the front here. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide all of these ends. Um, I, I was carrying some of them through as I, as I was going and then I thought that you could see them a little bit. So I'm going to actually do them separately and I'm going to just bring them up through these stitches and then in through underneath one of these and then back down a stitch um, and hide them that way so that you can't see them as they trail along. And um, yeah, so I'm going to do two more rows and then I will see you back. Okay, friends. I'm done. <laughs> and I'm sure you are too if you're at this point in the video and I'm loving it. I think it looks awesome i love it it's great um so now i'm going to add um fringe to the bottom and i'm going to put the fringe in in every one of these little squares okay um and so you go ahead and you look at my video if you don't know how to do a fringe you go ahead and you look at my video um on my channel that shows you how i make my fringes and uh and follow that follow along with that make your fringes as long as you want and um add them and it'll be wonderful but before we do that I want to uh, show you what I'm doing to the sleeve, okay? So I started it already. Um, I'm gonna show you the other one because I finished it. All I did, I just have to hide these, is I started up in the, in the, um, oh, what are you? I started up in the uh, middle here at the top and I attached my yarn and then I, I'm folding it over for three, one, two, three rows okay and then all I'm doing is I'm picking up one of the stitches um, that's in the back here so you'll see that um, like there are some the front of the stitches are farther are like 
like this one, I wouldn't use that one. It's underneath this stitch, so I know this is further in the back. So you just pick up a stitch that looks like it's more on the back, um, and you, you just pick up the stitch and go around. And I'm going to show you in a second, but you don't see it on the other side, so, um, so it's wonderful. But on the other arm, the other sleeve, I... Uh, I started it up at the top here, okay? So I've got uh, one, two, three. And so I, I threaded my needle and I started it up here and I'm gonna go down this way. So I'm gonna fold this over and count one, two, three. Actually, there's almost four there, but uh, it's only because of the way it's sitting, okay? So uh, one, two, three. And then I'm going to make sure that, that little end is poking out there or straight. And then I'm gonna grab a loop and I'm going to just go through, just like that, okay, and pull it. Then I'm going to straighten this out again so that there's one, two, three rows. This fourth row is, is um, the side, it's the turning row, okay. And I'm going to pick up a loop, just one loop, because I don't want it to go through to the front, and I'm going to pull. Don't um, don't tighten it too tight. You just want it to... to uh, go secure to, so each piece is, is is secure to the other, but you don't want it to be tight um, and you don't want it to pucker. So I'm just not putting really much tension on there at all. I'm gonna pick up another loop and I'm gonna continue that process all the way around until, well, actually not all the way around till I get to the middle here, till the middle on the inside. Then I'm gonna secure it off. Then I'm gonna go back up to this side and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to add another piece here and I'm going to go down the same way because um, I just find it easier if you start at the thicker side um, and go down. And then you'll see like on when you get to the to the um, all this yarn, when you get to the inside here, it kind of tapers off. So you don't have a big ridge on, underneath your arm there. You're just going to taper it off on both sides there so that it comes down. OK, and it works out very nicely and it looks great when it's on. OK, so that's what that's what the. Uh, outside looks like okay I mean if you want to if you want to to make it um just as thick on the bottom here you can do that um I just found it hard to put it over and I felt that because there's this little ridge right here um doubling that over each other felt too thick so that's why I chose to just let it go down into a point and and uh, and it works fine so I'm going to do that on both sides get that finished and then uh put my fringe on and we're almost done then I'll see you back okay so have fun do that and then come back and and see me okay Okay, so if you stuck with me to the end, you've finished your project and it's beautiful. Um, my fringe turned out wonderful. There it is. What I did is I alternated. I took um, these two colors and then these two colors. So I used four colors, but I alternated them. So I used these two colors and these ones and back to those two. And I just staggered the, the two different var color variations. Okay. And then, oh, I'm out of breath. I just was running down the stairs. <laughs> Haven't done that in a while. And then what I did is I took a cotton tea towel or any cotton towel. This one's an old towel that I use for ironing and stuff. You can see it's <laughs> it's had its uh, day for for drying dishes. But anyway, so I use this. What I do is I put I get my steam iron all ready, and I take my once once it's uh once it's hot. When when because you're playing with this yarn all the time and you're squishing it in your hand and you're just like once I put these these um tassel or these fringes on it, it was bunched up like this and here and there and everywhere and it looked terrible so what I do is I just smooth it down like that I put my tea towel over it and with a hot steam iron I just go over it okay not for a long period of time I just press my steam so that it steams in there and gets it nice and I do the same for all my edging I do it on the front and I do it on the back it just makes it so soft. And then just from all your handling and stuff, um, it just smooths it out and makes it beautiful. I do it for the armholes. I do it for the whole thing actually, except for the middle back panel. I didn't do that, but I did my arms and it's just so smooth and so wonderful. So anyways, um, that's what it looks like. So um, I thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. Um, if you made one that's uh, 
that's striped, then you know you had a lot of ends to put in and it took a little more time. If you did a solid one, then, then it, you probably got through it faster and it's ab probably absolutely gorgeous too. Um, please hit the thumbs up on my video. I always ask you to do that. I appreciate it very much and subscribe if you haven't already. And I have a Facebook group that's called Koala Knits and Knacks. If you haven't joined that, then please come over and join it and show us your projects that you have made. And, and uh, I'd love to see, see your work. And if you've made a vest like this, I would love to see it. So um, thank you for joining me on this tutorial. Have a great day, my friends, and happy knitting.